Welcome to the AI Peepers Podcast Daily. Today we're diving into UI TARS. Um, it's this model that can, well, interact with graphical user interfaces, you know, GUIs, like yeah. using a keyboard and mouse. Yeah, like teaching someone to use a computer, but you're just showing them no code. Okay. Uh, how does it even see the screen? It doesn't have like eyes, right? Right, not like ours. Yeah. It uses uh, tons of GUI screenshots, but they've been labeled. So like every button text box, it's all tagged you know, what it is, what it does, like a map of the interface for the AI. Ah, uh, so it learns by example, kind of how we <laughs> teach kids, right? Yeah, exactly. And then the cool thing is UI TARS can use that on totally new GUIs. Like it doesn't matter if it's uh, a website, a mobile app, whatever, it figures it out. That's wild. But seeing is one thing. How does it actually do stuff like clicking, typing, all that? So they recorded people, right, doing tasks on different UIs. UI TARS watches those and learns like, okay, this action goes with this thing on the screen. So it's like watching a tutorial, picking up the steps. But GUIs can get so complex. What about like multi-step things or if something unexpected happens? Now that's where it gets really interesting. So UI TARS actually uses... Uh, System 2 reasoning. It's like the kind of thinking we do for tough problems, not just reacting. Hold on. The AI is thinking. Break that down for our listeners. It's not human thinking, but it plans, strategizes, like it looks back at what it did, thinks about the goal, even uses info from like UI tutorials. It has a game plan, but adjusts as it goes. Wow. But even with all that, wouldn't it still mess up sometimes? Of course, it's learning. But here's the kicker. UI TARS uses reflection tuning. So they show its errors, how to fix them, recover. So learning from humans and O itself. Exactly. Right. And get this, they constantly put it on virtual machines. It generates more data, keeps refining itself, like never stops practicing. So like an athlete training for the big game. Perfect analogy. Now, the question is, does all that learning translate into real world performance? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Let's get into that next. They put it through these benchmarks, like tests to see how well it can, you know, perceive, understand, act in different GUIs. Okay, so standardized tests, but for software. What kind of tasks are we talking? Everything. Clicking buttons, typing, then complex stuff, you know, multi-step things that need planning, reasoning. Example. Uh, one was using a web browser, like searching for info, then filling out a form. Another was uh, booking a flight on an app. Lots of steps there. Yeah, those sound like things people actually do. Yeah. So how do UI TARS do? It consistently did better than, well, other top AI systems, even some based on those uh, big commercial models everyone knows. Really? Beat the big guys. Yeah. It shows how powerful this whole end-to-end -end learning is. It's not just copying actions. It gets the goal, adapts, you know. Okay, color me impressed. Mm -hmm. But we keep talking actions, tasks. Yeah. What about memory? Does UI TARS, like... Remember things, past actions, important info. Totally. Just like us, it needs memory. It has both uh, short-term and long-term memory components, like mimicking how ours works. Okay, now I'm intrigued. Break it down for us. Short-term's like a scratch pad, holds info for the current task. Like if it's filling a form, got to remember what it already put in other fields, right? Right, right. Long-term then, what's in there? Stuff that's helpful across tasks. Common UI patterns, how to navigate specific software, even user preferences. So it builds this knowledge library it can use for new situations. That's how it keeps getting better, I guess. Exactly. And that's key. It's different from those old agent frameworks. Those relied on like pre-programmed rules, couldn't really learn and adapt. So not just instructions, it's really learning as it goes. Yeah. Now we mentioned this before, but the unified action space, what's that about? Why is it important for something like UI TARS? So the problem is every GUI is different, right? Click on a website, tap on an app, keyboard shortcut here, menu option there. Yeah, how do you make one AI that handles all that without programming it for each one separately? That's where the unified action space comes in. It's like a, a common set of actions the AI gets, no matter the... Universal language for software. Exactly. It doesn't need to relearn for each platform. It uses this language for anything, phone, computer, whatever. Super efficient. But I imagine it's still hard to... like make those abstract actions happen on an actual screen, how does it know where to click, what to type? Grounding. So it can accurately map those actions to like points on the screen. If it wants to click a button, it finds it, translates that location into coordinates to move the mouse or touch the screen. Ah, so connecting the idea of click to the real spot on the screen. Precisely. It's crucial for UI TARS to, you know, actually do things, not just think about them. Got it. So it can see understand, act in GUIs. It has memory, a universal language, can ground its actions, 
Anything else about its abilities? One of the coolest things is how it reasons. Remember uh, System 2 reasoning? Yeah, the thinking, strategizing thing. Happy to hear more. Especially how that makes UI TARS different. So most older agents used System 1. It's fast, intuitive, like recognizing an icon, clicking without thinking. Like our brains on autopilot. Exactly. Good for some GY stuff, but not complex tasks. You need planning, strategy, adapting if things go wrong. And UI TARS goes beyond that. Yep. It uses System 2, the more uh, deliberate thinking we use for tough problems. So it's really thinking through the steps, like a human would. Exactly. That's what lets it handle those harder tasks that would trip up other AIs. Okay, now we're cooking. Can you give us an example, like how UI TARS would use System 2 to solve something? Say it has to book a flight on a website. That's not one action. It's a whole process. Searching, dates, times, info, seats, payment. Tons of steps. Decisions. Right. Now, a basic AI, just System 1, might get stuck. It can only react to what it sees right then, can't plan ahead, or if something goes wrong. And UI TARS is different how? It analyzes the task, breaks it down, then it uses its knowledge, like those UI patterns, past experiences, and makes a plan. Like a chess player thinking moves ahead. Exactly. And as it goes, it's watching for problems, error message, something changes on the interface. Like when a website updates and you can't find the button anymore? Exactly. UI TARS doesn't freak out. It uh, stops, figures out what's up, adjusts the plan. So thinking on its feet, not just a script. Precisely. That's why System 2 is so powerful. It makes UI TARS much better at those real world tasks that trip up other AIs. I'm seeing why they're so excited about this. It's not just a program. It's like, well, intelligent. Good way to put it. Now, we've talked training data. How much data are we talking? Got to be massive to right. teach it to do all this, right? Yeah, spill the tea. Yeah. What went into creating this training data? They really went all out to make it, you know, comprehensive, representative. Not just random screenshots. Oh, way more involved. Yeah. They used uh, automated and manual methods to get screenshots from everywhere. Websites, apps, programs, different operating systems even. That sounds like a lot. It was. But important, so UI TARS sees enough different GUIs to learn and adapt. Makes sense. So screenshots, then what? Got to prep them for training. Annotation. Annotation, like yeah. adding labels, descriptions, so the AI can, you know, see what things are, like you were saying. Exactly. Every single thing on every screenshot labeled what it is, what it does, where it is, buttons, boxes, icons, everything. Like making a detailed map for each one must take in forever. Huge effort. And you need expertise. But it's how you train an AI that really understands GUIs. Okay, screenshots, annotations. Mm -hmm. How does that become training for UI TARS? All that, plus those human recordings we talked about, goes into a deep learning algorithm. Deep learning. Sounds complicated. Is it? But think of it like uh, showing the AI tons of examples, letting it figure out the rules itself. Ah, so by seeing all that, it gets how GUIs work, how to use them. Yep. And the more it sees, the better it gets. Makes sense. But I'm guessing this whole training thing needs crazy computing power, really. You bet. Training something like UI TARS takes serious horsepower. We're talking those uh, supercomputers, clusters, they're called, made for this kind of massive data, deep learning stuff. Not your average laptop, though. Nope. Rooms full of servers running 24-7. Wow. Really shows the scale of this whole thing. It does. Teams of researchers, engineers, data scientists pushing what's possible with AI. Now, everyone says UI TARS is great. But how do we know? How do you even measure what an AI like this can do? That's the question. AI evaluation. Evaluation. Like giving it a grade. Kind of. It's essential to AI research. Compare models, see progress, what needs work. Makes sense. But how do you evaluate something like UI TARS? It's not like a multiple choice test. True. Evaluating agents that, you know, interact with the real world is tricky. But they've got some clever methods. Okay, lay it on us. One is benchmarks. Benchmarks, like standardized tests, but for AI. Exactly. Set of tasks to test specific abilities. Mm -hmm. For GI agents, it might be things like uh, navigating a website, filling a form, using an app to do something specific, like book that flight, order food, you know? So giving it challenges, see how it does. Yep. Compare different AIs on the same benchmark, see who's better. Makes sense. Other methods. Sometimes they use human evaluation. So actual people judging the AI. Yeah. Some things are too complex, nuanced for benchmarks. You need human judgment. Like if it's writing something creative, that's hard to measure with a test. But how do you make sure the humans are fair? Good point. They have guidelines, protocols, like multiple people evaluate the same thing, average the scores. Okay. Benchmarks, human evaluation, 
anything else. There's a big push towards real world performance now. Take it out of the lab, see how it does in the wild. Exactly. The real test is how well it works with real users, real systems. Makes sense, but how do you test that? Uh, one way is user studies. So watch real people using the AI. Yep. Have people use it to do something you've observed, get feedback, analyze the data, see how effective, how user-friendly it is. Get real-world insights. Exactly. And it's becoming more important as these agents, you know, go from the lab to everyday users. Okay. Benchmarks, human evaluation, real-world testing, good toolkit. And always evolving. AI keeps advancing, new challenges pop up. Makes sense. Now, back to UI TARS. How was it evaluated? What tests did it pass? They used a combo benchmarks, human evaluation, even some real-world testing, and it did amazingly well. Okay, give us the highlights. One main benchmark was Osworld. Osworld, what's that? It's uh, pretty advanced, made specifically for AIs that use desktop operating systems. It's got all these tasks, like real-world things people do, launching apps, files, searching, editing, emails, all that. Sounds like a real test of those everyday computer skills. Uh, How do UITARs do? State-of-the-art. Better than other top AIs, even some based on those big commercial models we talked about. Beating the big boys again? It is. Shows how well UI TAR's approach works. It's not just about raw power. It's learning, understanding. Yeah. You know? So Osworld was one. What else? They also used Android World. Android World. Sensing a theme here. Yep. As you can guess, it's for AIs on Android phones. Like the mobile version of Osworld. Exactly. All the stuff people do on their phones, apps, menus, texts, calls, photos, social media. Okay, testing it in the mobile world. How'd it go? Amazing results again. Beat other top AIs made for Android. So, safe to say, UI TARS is pretty capable, whether it's desktop or mobile. Absolutely. It shows how clever the researchers were designing and training this thing. They really pushed the boundaries of AI and... Well, how it interacts with us. We've covered a lot. How UI TARS works, how it learns, reasons, how they test it. But what does it all mean? What are the implications of this kind of tech? Great question. It's a big deal. UI TARS is a huge step for AI being able to, like, interact with the world. Could change a lot of things. Okay, I'm listening. What kind of impact could it have? Well... <laughs> The good stuff first. It could make us way more productive in lots of industries. Think about automating all those boring tasks that take up so much time. Like data entry, scheduling, all that. So we can focus on more uh, creative, strategic stuff. Exactly. AI and humans working together, each doing what they're best at. And it could make tech way more accessible. We talked about that, yeah. But I'd love to hear more. Imagine someone who can't use a mouse and keyboard easily. UI TARS could respond to their voice. They can control the computer just as well. Wow. That's powerful. Opens up so much for people who've been shut out of the digital world. Exactly. And it's not just making existing tech accessible. It's about designing totally new interfaces made for AI. So like AI native interfaces. Yeah. Totally different from what we're used to. Could be more visual, dynamic, responsive to the AI. Changes how we think about interacting with computers. That's pretty mind blowing. Yeah. But it also makes you wonder... If AI can use interfaces like us, where do we go from here? What's next? That's what everyone's trying to figure out. AI is moving so fast, it's hard to predict. But there are some really cool possibilities. Okay, I'm ready for more AI futurism. What's the world of tomorrow going to look like with yeah. UI TARS and uh, whatever comes after? Well, one thing is uh, even more autonomy. UI TARS is already good at learning, adapting, but future AIs might be way more independent. So less handholding, more AI thinking for itself. Right. And as that happens, they'll become more versatile too. More tasks, more complex systems. Like AI that manages our calendars, books, trips, writes emails, even runs businesses. It's not that crazy. We're already seeing some of that in early systems. That's both exciting and a little scary. But what else is coming? Another trend is AI combining with other cool tech, like uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, Internet of Things. Okay, now you're talking my language. AI interacting with the physical world through robots, sensors, all those smart devices. Exactly. Imagine an AI that not only controls your computer, but also like uses robots or appliances in your house. AI that cooks dinner, drives our cars, even does surgery. It's crazy what's possible. And as all this combines, the digital and physical worlds will blur. So many opportunities. That's a wild future to think about. And I think that's a good place to wrap up part two of our deep dive into UI TARS. We've gone through how it works, what it can do, what it means for AI in general. Join us for the final part where we'll get into the challenges and opportunities this presents, what it means for jobs, society, even what it means to be human in a world with such smart AI. 
Welcome back to the AI Papers Podcast Daily. We're finishing up our deep dive into UI TARS, the AI that's, well, kind of changing how we think about using software. And like we said, today's the big picture stuff, the uh, challenges and opportunities with an AI this capable. Yeah, because anytime you talk about AI that can learn, adapt, act on its own, people get a little nervous. For sure. We all see those sci-fi movies where it goes wrong, but UI TARS is a tool, right? Like any tool, it depends how we use it. Okay, so let's get into it. What are some challenges it presents? One that comes up a lot is jobs. Like, if an AI can use software, do tasks as well as a human, will people lose their jobs? Yeah, are the robots taking over the office? It's not that simple. Yeah. UI TARS is limited by its training and it doesn't like fully understand complex human stuff. So it's not AI replacing us, but more like working together, yeah. each doing what they're good at. Exactly, collaboration, UI TARS does the boring repetitive stuff. We do the creative strategic thinking. Like a super efficient assistant handling all the mundane things. Right. Now, another thing to think about is security. If an AI can control software, what if someone hacks it, uses it for bad stuff? Yeah, anything connected to the internet, there's that risk. For sure, gotta have strong security, protect these systems. So like firewalls, encryption, all that? Yep, and it's constant, right? As hackers get smarter, we gotta keep up. Sounds like a never ending battle. It is, but an important one. Okay, enough doom and gloom. What about the good stuff? What opportunities does UI TARS open up? Yeah, let's get positive. What can it do? We've talked about productivity, accessibility, but there's more. Imagine AI that personalizes your digital experience. Like, the software adapts to you. No more fighting with confusing interfaces, trying to figure out complicated programs. Exactly. Tech becomes way easier and uh, more enjoyable for everyone. I'm liking this future. <laughs> But thinking specifically about UI TARS, where does it go from here? It's hard to say AI is moving so fast, but based on what we've seen, I think we're just getting started. What are some possibilities you're excited about? Even more autonomy. AI that not only uses software, but also learns, adapts with almost no human help. Like a personal AI assistant that knows what you need before you even ask. Exactly. Helping with schedules, finances, giving advice, even supporting your creative work. Wow. AI that enhances what we can do. And as it keeps getting better, who knows what breakthroughs are coming? It's a really exciting time for AI. It is, but we gotta remember, big power, big responsibility, right? Yeah. As these systems get smarter, we have to think about the ethics, make sure AI is used for good. Absolutely. We need to keep talking about this, how AI affects society, make sure it benefits everyone. Couldn't agree more. And on that note, listeners, we've reached the end of our deep dive into UI TARS. We covered how it works, the challenges, the opportunities, what might be coming next. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Keep exploring AI, stay informed, and think critically about how it's all going to shape our world. Because ultimately, the future of AI is in our hands. Let's make it a future we can all be proud of.